Here's Brody Brazil. Okay, so a lot of you here on YouTube have been asking me to put together a Sean Murphy trade video. All right, let's do it. But I also want to say, it feels like some of you were actually caught off guard by this deal going down. And not like you were completely surprised by it, right? Because Sean Murphy's name going into winter meetings... And during winter meetings, he was among the forefront, always trending on social media. There was a lot of talk about him going to Cleveland. Ultimately, he ends up with Atlanta. But I also feel the sensation that as winter meetings winded down and concluded, everybody was under the assumption that, hey, no deal happened. It must not have been the right time. We're probably not going to get a deal. And we will see Sean Murphy back in an A's uniform, at least to start spring training 2023. Well... Obviously, that's not going to happen. To be honest, and nobody told me this, I just kind of had the gut instinct that something was imminent. It obviously now, in retrospect, might have just taken longer because it was a three-team deal. And by the way, how do three-team deals even happen? I mean, they're not totally impossible, but they are still rare in professional sports. I'm curious the, the dynamics of this. Are two teams talking and then somebody else walks into the conversation like, hey, what's going on, fellas? What are we doing here? Can I get in on this? Is it like that? Or is it two friends talking and saying, you know what? This isn't really perfect for you nor I. How about we how about we bring in our old buddy over there to see if they can, you know, sweeten the deal for for both sides of this? How did it come together? How did it work? I don't know. But maybe this is why it took an extra, what, three, four, five days after winter meetings to secure this three-team deal. Okay, so the A's obviously sending away Sean Murphy. And I know you're not watching this, Murph, but I just want to say thank you for everything you did. Great player, great leader. Came up at an interesting time, kind of kind of the end of, of what Oakland was doing for 17, 18, and 19. Obviously, they won the division in 20, but it's just so unfortunate he didn't get a lot of time in that, in that Chapman Olsen era that now he's kind of concluding by being one of the last remaining players from that group. There's really not a lot more trades the A's can or will make from that group. He's he's one of the last. So obviously Murph going to Atlanta, and I know he's going to do big things there. Already has the gold glove, had another nomination this past season. But what he'll do with the bat, the power, probably put him you know fifth, sixth, seventh in a lineup. He will tear the cover off a of baseball. He'll hit like a cleanup hitter. Uh, down there. So Murph, I wish you the best. I know we haven't even seen your best, and that's saying a lot. UL Payamps, also from Oakland, who had some pretty good appearances out of the bullpen last year. He goes to the Milwaukee side of this deal from the Oakland A's. Okay. As for the incoming haul, the five players that the A's receive here, the veteran catcher Manny Pena from Atlanta, also three arms from Atlanta, the lefty Kyle Muller, the righty Freddie Tarnock and the righty Roy Bear Salinas, who, by the way, uh, spent all of his last season down at the A level, low and high A, I believe, is where he finished. So all, all of these players, those pitchers, are all on different trajectories, different spots. Obviously, Manny is the veteran. More on all of these individuals in just a second. And oh, by the way, a utility man, Estiuri Ruiz, comes in from the Milwaukee Brewers as part of this three-team deal. Okay. Let's dive into the players one by one. Manny Pena, 35 years old. The catcher bats right. He's played 414 games across nine seasons. So he's been doing this a long time. He's been through and through with the journey, right? Up and down and here and there. Because nine seasons, if you are even a backup on a regular basis, that probably gets you closer to five to six, five to six hundred games probably. So Uh, Doesn't have a ton of games played, and in fact, last year, this is a big part of it, only played five games. Had a wrist injury that ultimately required surgery, kept him out the the rest of last year. But overall, a career 243 hitter. The A's are his seventh big league organization. He's signed for 2023. He has a player option for 2024. Now, the big deal here is that Shea Langoliers is going to get the opportunity to be the everyday, everyday guy, everyday catcher. Uh, what did he end up playing? 30 or so games, top of my head, last year? Um, so this will be, and in a lot of ways for Langoliers, the first full season, obviously, but is it more of a freshman season or a sophomore season? Doesn't matter. You need somebody else 
who can help, who can at least back up, be solid. Uh, and I'm not saying that Langleyers will need this to a large degree. I'm just saying it gives a team a lot of confidence to go into a season when you know that you have one real green catcher, especially at the catching position, to also go into that season with at least a certified backup who you know has a track record. Obviously, for Pena, you just hope that that he can bounce back and be healthy. So that's one of the veterans the A's get. Well, the lone veteran the A's get in this deal. How about Kyle Muller, the left-handed starting pitcher, 25 years old. He made eight starts in 2021. He made three starts in 2022. 5 ERA across 49 innings pitched. 49 is also the number of strikeouts he recorded or has recorded in those 49 innings. So a strikeout per inning, like that's a pretty good ratio. 28 walks, that's part of the location stuff they're talking about with him. If, if he can dial in a little bit more uh, command and location, cut down on the walks, keep the strikeouts there because they really like this. His fastball and his slider, scattering reports say that he's got plus velocity. And all of this for a very good reason, right? He is, was, I should say, Atlanta's number one prospect in their organization, according to MLB.com. By the way, we're doing one by one. We'll take a big picture look at this trade at the very end. Freddie Tarnock, 24 years old, right-handed starting pitcher. He's got a 98-mile-an-hour heater, uh, plus on the changeup. Uh, he's got a curveball and a slider he also throws. Only pitched two-thirds of an inning last year. But you look at double-A AA and triple-A for him last year. It was pretty successful. 124 strikeouts in 106 and two-thirds innings worked. He was the number six prospect in Atlanta's organization, according to MLB.com. So you've got two pitchers who, yeah, are probably right there on the cusp of of being an athletic, like next year or pretty darn soon after that. Then you get Roy Bear Salinas, the righty is 21 years old. He was the seventh prospect overall in Atlanta's organization. 175 strikeouts in 109 innings pitched last year. He was in high A last year. I think he started maybe low A to high A. Anyway, A ball pitcher last year. But check this out. Across all of minor league baseball, all the teams, all the leagues, all of the levels, he was fourth in all of minor league baseball in strikeouts. This guy loves to get the Ks. So Roy Bear Salinas might be a little bit farther off in terms of the timeline, but obviously another pitcher that you can see what the A's saw in him. Estiori Ruiz, 23 years old. Now, it's a great versatility he brings. And we'll talk about in another video some of the other free agents the A's have signed here, um, how they're really going for players that can do a little bit of everything. Chad Pinder not likely to be coming back, but we love Chad for that. If you're getting players like that, we definitely know how that can give the A's a lot of value so that when players get called up, you don't need to take Ruiz out. If he's playing second, he can't play there. Maybe he's in center. Maybe he's in left field. But he's 23 years old, plays a little bit of infield on the right side, plays center and left field as well as that. Base stealer. They love his speed. Now, I don't know to what degree the A's plan on using that uh, this season. They've 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 kind of gone in spurts. Like all of a sudden, the A's in a month, they'll steal a ton of bases. And then the next month, they just won't even attempt. So... Uh, that remains to be seen. But minor league baseball, he's got a ton of experience there. Six years, 521 games played. Up at the major league level, only 17 games played. I believe all, well, almost all with the Padres. And then he got traded last year as part of that Josh Hader deal from, um, what, from Milwaukee, no, excuse me, from San Diego <laughs> to Milwaukee. Hader went from Milwaukee to San Diego. But part of that Hader trade uh, he was number eight overall prospect-wise in the Brewers organization. So not a ton of, of big league experience, definitely on the cusp of something. And the A's have a lot of team control with him. He's arbitration eligible, not even until 2026. He's not a free agent until 2029. So that's a look at the individuals the A's are getting back of this uh, Sean Murphy trade. To judge it overall, I understand why some people would say, well, you got quantity, did you get quality? I mean, here's the deal. 
Sean Murphy had a couple more years of team control, and that seemed like the most valuable part. It's like Atlanta right now doesn't have to worry about uh, him hitting the free agent market. They know who their catcher now is going to be, Murph, and a really good one for the next couple of years. I believe Murph also 28 years old? Come on, Brazil, you should have looked this up and double-checked it. 26, 27, 28, I think he's a little bit older, right? Older than you would expect uh, for for the couple years of experience, really, he came up at the end of 19, 20 was a short year, 21 was full, and last year he he played a bunch. And by the way, credit to him for overcoming all of those early knee injuries that he had in his career, was able to get past that, endure it, uh, you know, so reliable, so durable. But I think as you go back to just judging this trade, I mean, if if one of those pitching arms works out for the A's, is that is that a, not a good enough trade off? What if two of them work out? Uh, what if Ruiz is the talented, versatile guy that you certainly hope he could be in the next five years to help this usher this next group in? I mean, heck, not a free agent until twenty twenty nine. He should be playing in their new Oakland stadium by then, if you know what I mean. Um, so you can kind of see the direction what they what they're building for here in terms of the future, and and I guess. I understand. I understand the questions about this deal. I don't. I don't understand the full-on criticism of it, but I'm just saying there seem to be some players there that have the ability to be a next big important thing. The A's kind of went pitching heavy. Um, I, I totally get that. And and the Pena part, you know, that is to secure the here and now. You needed something for here and now, and I think that's also obvious in Oakland's recent free agent. Uh, signings and acquisitions, like they also need to build this year's team because as much as they are about the future and the next couple years, you want the group that's coming up, the ones that have already made their debuts and the ones that are about to make their debut, you don't want them surrounded on a team that is like, you know, pulling a 50-pound weight behind them. You don't want that. You want this team to at least have some chemistry, have some possibility, have some upward tra- trajectory and stability right now. So you need to bring in reinforcements for right now, even if you know they're not permanent solutions for your team. And I think the A's, obviously, you know, securing another catcher, that's part of it. Don't forget, there's a couple really good catching prospects in the A's organization. Tyler Soderstrom went all the way from single A to triple A last year. So Maybe at some point you have two young catchers in Oakland that you really, really like. And I'm not, I'm not trying to kick anybody out the door yet, uh, but you can kind of see what the A's are, are angling towards here. Anyway, biggest thing of this, yeah, I mean, personally, I hate to see Murph go, but I think we all realized this was going to happen. It did happen. Uh, let me know what you think of the trade and my breakdown in the comments section below.